Through studying the crop during the growing season, farmers learn about the behavior of observable pests and diseases. Classification of the pests and diseases is mainly determined by the type of damage they inflict and other aspects of behavior. For example, this farmer classification distinguishes day and night flyers and the non-damaging and damaging types. Here, taxonomically similar insects causing different problems are often separately classified. The visual similarity of their morphology is also important. Larval forms of different species are classed together in the category of olod in this example. The number one problem here is weevil. Even chemicals don't control it. Pesticides or any kind of uh, insecticides. Ang gabuhaton lang nato, namo din ni. As soon as we notice an attack of weevil, we start harvesting the mature roots. If we see a heavy attack of the pest, we plow and clean the area. Harvesting the crop at the right time is how we manage this pest. Farmers also distinguish different cultivars using a wide range of morphological characteristics relating both to plant architecture as well as to the form of the edible part. Leaf shape is a common distinguishing feature and sometimes is used for naming. For example, five fingers used for pota sweet potato varieties with five deep lobes in the leaves. Roots are characterized for skin color, flesh color, shape and defects. For farmers, characterizations are not neutral. There are also evaluations in that for almost all criteria, some characteristics are preferred over others. One of the most important areas of indigenous knowledge, especially where sweet potato is grown mainly as a subsistence crop, is the cooking quality and taste aspects of different cultivars. In this example of a classification of sweet potato cultivars in Irian Jaya, a number of key criteria for both cooking quality and taste are used to differentiate varieties. Knowledge about uses can be equally diverse. Some species or varieties may be particularly valued for use as food, others for converting into a processed product. Still others are valued for the abundance of their foliage, which is good for livestock feed. Various techniques are available to understand the different criteria which farmers use to characterize cultivars and to determine how particular cultivars are evaluated against these criteria. Here, the farmers are being asked to compare and contrast three cultivars. Which two are similar and which one is different for particular characteristics? This is called the triads test. Flesh color and root shape and taste are three criteria which are being used for differentiation. Once the criteria have been elicited, a matrix ranking is conducted to assess how particular local cultivars are evaluated against the criteria. Farmers score cultivars from one to five, often using local materials for the exercise. Some people think that indigenous knowledge is something traditional and unchanging. But in fact, indigenous knowledge really means knowledge that we make our own. 
A child learns about techniques of planting, about the characteristics of varieties from its mother or father. Mother may be from a distant island like this woman, but father is from the nearby mountain area. The child absorbs different lessons from mother and father and weaves those lessons into her own local understanding of current circumstances. The process of learning and adaptation has been going on for millennia. Though some people talk about indigenous technical knowledge, in fact, there is no clear distinction between the technical and the cultural in many societies. Actions may be performed, like the coinciding of planting with a certain phase of the moon, which might have technical significance we don't yet understand fully, but which, from the point of view of local beliefs, relate more to the symbolic significance of the moon in relation to the growth of crops. When we plant rice, we accompany it with a ritual, the talabugta, to obtain a good yield and good harvest. At that time, you should kill a chicken and a pig. When we plant kamote, we watch the moon is full. It doesn't matter about the month as long as the moon is full. This is true. Indigenous knowledge is shared knowledge through shared experiences. But the sharing is limited by several factors, such as age, gender, ethnicity, and even social class. Location also influences indigenous knowledge through the different experiences of agroecologies and farming systems. For example, in the case of sweet potato, people cultivating sweet potato as an upland commercial crop have very different knowledge and perceptions than those who cultivate sweet potato or taro as a home gardens crop. 